Hey, welcome back. We've been talking about introductory motion concepts in physics, so maybe you are a physics or an AP physics student, and the concept we're going to explore right now is actually pretty short, but really important, and that is this. The slope of a position versus time graph is the velocity at any given point among that graph. Like, whatever the slope is at that point, that is the equivalent to velocity. So I'm going to give you a proof of this and an example of this. This is super important, and you may not even realize how important it is now. But as the course goes on, and if you get an AP Physics and or a calculus, you'll begin to appreciate how important this concept is. So where have we been? We've talked about average speed and average velocity. This lesson is going to be about the slope of a displacement versus time graph, and we're eventually heading out to average acceleration. That'll be my next lesson that I'll go over. All right, so let's get started. I wanted to draw my cats into this. I have two cats. This is Sky, the male on the left. This is Emmy, the female on the right. She's being ridiculous in this picture, hanging out inside a napkin holder so she can get more attention. And so I made up a problem associated with them, and that is a position versus time data table. So let's take a look at this data table, and I want you to just look at the data for a moment and see if you can notice patterns in the cat A data and the cat B data to kind of describe what's going on mentally. Hopefully it makes sense to say the cat A data, Sky's data, is that he just moves at a slow pace throughout these 10 seconds. He's just walking in the forward direction for 10 seconds at a slow pace. Whereas Emmy, her motion is more complex. For the first set of three seconds she's essentially not moving for the middle section here she is moving and for the final section she has stopped moving she's not moving at all we could also compare in this middle section who is moving faster sky or emmy over here and so we could focus on this middle section as being instructive now one way to think about this is the position change for sky is three centimeters a second whereas the position change for emmy is five centimeters a second so it makes sense to say that emmy has a greater position change per second if we were to graph this what would be true about the slope for Sky and Emmy during the middle section right here? I'm going to go ahead and label these as 1, 2, and 3. So during section 2, which would have a greater slope, cat A or cat B? And hopefully you're able to come up with the idea that during section 2, this cat B data would have a greater slope. Why is that? Well, her position has a greater change per second than his does during the same time. Her data looks different as well because for the first few seconds her position is not changing and for the last few seconds her position is not changing as well, whereas Sky has a constant position change throughout the 10 seconds. So what do you think is the relationship here between the slope of these graphs and the velocity? One way to approach this problem is to think, well, what is Emmy's velocity during the third section and during the first section here? If she just stays at a constant 17 or a constant 2 centimeter mark, well, her speed or her velocity, either way, is going to be zero during those sections. She's simply not moving during those times. And if we think about what's happening during section 2, Sky has a slower steady pace, whereas Emmy has a faster pace during section two. She is gaining more. She's going up more in terms of centimeters for every second she goes over. She has a greater gain in the y-axis for every second she goes over. And that means she has a greater slope. Does she have a greater velocity during that time? And the answer is yes. So there is this connection with slope of a position time graph and velocity. In fact, they are exactly the same. The slope of a position versus time graph is the instantaneous velocity for that part of the graph. So what does that mean? Well, if we looked at the velocity right here, it would be zero. Right here, it would be zero. So any point along this line right here that has a zero slope would have a zero instantaneous velocity. So you could say, what's the velocity at two seconds? Well, that's going to be zero for Emmy. What's the velocity at eight seconds for Emmy? That is zero, nine seconds, zero, 10 seconds, that's zero. And you could say, well, what is the velocity here? Well, to solve for the velocity 
at any point during this time right here, you would just have to solve for the slope of this line, and that would be the velocity at any instantaneous point throughout this line right here. The same is true for Sky's data right here. If you solve for the slope of this line, because it's just one continuous line, the slope at 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 6 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever, any of these points along the line is going to be the same velocity the entire way through, just like saying it's the same slope the entire way through this line. This idea is crucial in understanding more concepts as you get deeper into physics. Alright, and so let me go about proving this to you and showing this to you in a different way. If we calculate using the velocity equation here, like we have talked about previously in a previous lesson I've done, if you take a look over here, you've got your delta x over delta t, or sometimes you would just write t. And that value is going to be 17 minus 7 centimeters over 6 minus 4 centimeters. That's going to be 5 centimeters a second if you just use this equation right here to calculate this value. Well, what if we did this using the slope equation using two points? Well, if we did that, you would still have the same answer either way. You get the same answer conceptually, and you get the same answer mathematically, either way you look at this. And so I do want to conclude with the main idea here. There really is just one main idea in this lesson, and that is this. The slope of a position versus time graph is the instantaneous velocity for that part of the graph. So the slope of this line will tell us the velocity at any point along this line. And that's true for any of the lines that you see here. That's true for any position versus time graph. Next up, we're going to be talking about average acceleration. Hopefully this lesson has been helpful. Thank you for listening. If you have a comment, please throw one down below. And I hope you have a great day.